Welcome back everyone to another Sabaton reaction video. Well, they have a new album coming out in March. It's their second album about the events of World War I. And uh, this is the second song that they've released uh, in, uh, in advance of that. The first one, of course, was Christmas Truce. This one's called Soldier of Heaven. And it has to do with the events on the Italian front uh, during the First World War. It's not an area of the war that people talk about very often, but it was a particularly devastating part of the war. Uh, especially for the Italians, but as the war went on, also for the Austro-Hungarians. And we're going to take a look at some of those numbers at the end, uh, after the song uh, associated uh, with the Italian front, just how devastating it really was. So stick around for that at the very end. I'll probably pause here and there during the song just to offer some feedback about some of the stuff they cover. I did watch the video once yesterday when it first came out, uh, but I haven't really done too much digging into this story. I wanted to be able to do it during this reaction video. So... Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit. I want to give a shout out to Jeffrey Hallinan, who is our latest patron at the executive producer level. Thank you and welcome uh, to the team, Jeffrey. I appreciate your support. I uh, appreciate all of our patrons. We've had a lot sign up in the last couple of days, so I appreciate all of you. And every single one of you who uh, like, who subscribe, who leave a comment, you are supporting this channel, and I'm grateful for all of that. Let's dive into this video. So, uh, you know, first of all, a lot of the Italian front is fought uh, in the mountains, uh, that that region there between Italy and Austria-Hungary uh, is particularly brutal ground to fight on. There's a lot of snow up there. Uh, and so this place that they're talking about is called Blood Mountain. And I don't remember the name of the mountain, but we'll look at it at the end. Um, but they, they call this event White Friday, but it's interesting because it actually takes place on a Wednesday. But for whatever reason, it has gone down in history as White Friday. And in terms of an avalanche of snow and ice, it is the deadliest uh, avalanche event in history. Uh, and it was a series of events, actually. It wasn't just one single avalanche. But basically what happened was uh, the opposing artillery would fire. Instead of firing directly on the soldiers, they would fire on the mountain trying to break up the snow and ice and cause avalanches. And both sides were successful in doing this and burying enemy soldiers in ice. And the estimates are anywhere between two and 10,000 soldiers who were buried in these avalanches and killed uh, in these events, uh, particularly the event of White Friday. So it's interesting they talk about all through the years I've been frozen in time because a lot of these men have never been recovered and they still rest up there on the mountain. And you can imagine, um, you know, I mean, they have a pretty good idea of who these men were that are up there. And so, you know, if you're a family member or something, you know that somewhere up on that mountain is the final resting place, but you can't really put a, a grave marker on it or anything like that. So it's particularly tragic to know where they are, but to not really be able to recover them. I'll take the stairway to heaven I'm sky high when I die I'll be immortal forever I never, I won't return to Blood Mountain I am the soldier of heaven I 
epic guitar solo. I like that. That's a particularly uh, poignant uh, quote there. I always dreamed that I would serve high above, just maybe not in that way. And so they're, they're kind of equating, you know, being up on the mountain with being in the sky, being high, uh, soldier of heaven. Uh, I couldn't find any reference to soldier of heaven being something specific as a term. I think it's just something they came up with uh, to kind of talk about the fact that this person is forever, you know, up high. It looks like now we're going to get some World War II planes in on the action. And, you know, immortal could refer to going to heaven and living forever, but also the fact that when you die in a place like that where the, the body gets frozen, it you tend to get preserved pretty well. I mean, you can look at examples of this, people who die up on Mount Everest, and years later they're marching past, you know, people are climbing past and they still see the bodies preserved and they get kind of mummified. I know it's a little creepy to talk about, but um, in, in a lot of ways you are kind of preserved in a way that you wouldn't if you had died on a battlefield in France. Dedicated to all those unknown heroes who never came home. And I guess that's a dove there, which, uh, you know, represents peace. And that's something we all hope for, that that at least for those men, they're at peace now and, and don't have to suffer from war. It's interesting if you read some of the, the journals and the descriptions that men in combat have of uh, when their buddies are killed. And they talk about that, about how very often there was a look of peace on the face of a soldier who had been killed and that for him, at least the war is now over. Um, so it's pretty interesting to think about it that way, but let's talk a little bit more about the Italian front and about this specific event, White Friday. So White Friday, Mount uh, Marmolada, or Marmolada is the name of the mountain uh, that they call Blood Mountain. Uh, and this one particular avalanche struck the barracks of Austro-Hungarian soldiers and killed 270 of them. Other, other avalanches on the same day struck Italian and other Austro-Hungarian positions, killing hundreds. According to some reports, both sides deliberately fired shells into the weakened snowpacks in an attempt to bury the other side. An accurate estimation of the number of casualties from the White Friday avalanches is not known. Historical documents suggest at least 2,000 victims among the soldiers and a few dozen among civilians. Uh, the date was 13th of December of 1916, uh, and it's been called White Friday for some reason, even though it happened on a Wednesday. And they, like I said, it could be as high as 10,000 uh, who were killed. Uh, in the aftermath of White Friday, 10,000 soldiers on all sides were killed in December from avalanches. Altogether, it constituted the greatest number of deaths caused by snow and ice debris from avalanches in history. Uh, and this is a picture here of the mountain a few years ago. Uh, so that gives you an idea of where this actually took place. Uh, now, the Italian front as a whole is pretty fascinating because uh, you have a strength of about 2 million soldiers on each side. And you're talking, for the Italians, 651,000 killed, uh, almost a million wounded, 500,000 missing or captured. I mean, so all told... Uh, well, I guess I was looking at casualties rather than strength on those sides. Um, all told, 2 million casualties. Uh, 2 million also on the Austro-Hungarian side. Uh, and we don't know how many German casualties there were. There were a few French. But um, I thought this was particularly interesting when you look at it. Uh, Italian military deaths there. Um, Austro-Hungarian killed in actions. 
uh, totaled uh, 155,000 dead, but the losses were increasing over time. Uh, as you can see, as the war goes on, it gets worse and worse. In 1915, killed in action fatalities on the Italian front were 18% of all Austro-Hungarian killed in action throughout the war, uh, or on all fronts. In 1916, it was 41%. In 1917, it was 64%. And in 1918, 84% of all their killed happened on the Italian front. Now, part of that is um, it was increasingly violent, but it also, as things wind down on the uh, eastern front with Russia, as Russia exits the war, then the majority of Austro-Hungarian casualties are going to take place on the front with Italy. But this shows you just how consequential Italy entering the war was. Uh, Italy, going into World War I, was an ally of the central powers. Uh, they were in this alliance, a defensive alliance with Germany and Austria-Hungary, but it only took effect if it was a defensive war. And the fact that Germany was the aggressor in this war and declaring war and attacking both Russia and France um, meant that Italy was no longer required to uh, hold up their end of the deal. And so uh, they wanted some territory uh, over here, um, it was Trieste in that area, the, some, some territory that Austro-Hungary held. And uh, they demanded that territory. And I think if the Austro-Hungarians had given it up, which they ended up losing it anyway, maybe Italy stays out of the war. Maybe they even join on the side of the Central Powers. But because they didn't get it, they join on the side of the Allies, the Entente. Uh, and you can see the effect of that. You can see, imagine if those... Uh, two million casualties had been available uh, to fight against the Russians, had been available to fight against the Western Front uh, if they didn't have to fight Italy when Italy enters the war in 1915. What a difference that might have made. So uh, interesting to think about. Um, it's something we probably should dive into more at some point. Uh, a lot of the battles took place in kind of the same area. Uh, during the Italian front, but it's something nobody really talks a lot about. So we'll get into that a little more. If you have any thoughts about it, let me know in the comment section below. I'll put a link in the description to Sabaton's video from this. They also have a lyric video where you can see the words if you didn't understand them all fully during the song. Uh, and we will certainly react to more of their songs when the album comes out here in a couple of months. Thanks for watching.